KDF-8 was an early British computer built by English Electric as a version of the RCA 501. By producing a software-compatible system, the intention was to reduce time and cost to develop software. However, the lengthy process of developing manufacturing capability meant that the system was soon outpaced by systems from other vendors. Only a few systems were sold during its five years of production. Due to the consolidation of the British computer industry, English Electric's computer division became one of the components of what would become ICL. Topic. Background During the late 1950s English Electric embarked on two major computer projects. Firstly, English Electric built a version of the RCA 501 computer which was known as the KDP-10 KDP for Kidsgrove Data Processing. This was a machine intended for commercial data processing applications, with fixed length instructions, and capabilities for processing variable length numeric and alphanumeric data. RCA's original design was adapted to use the types of transistors, diodes and other components manufactured in the UK. The KDP-10 was first delivered in 1961. In 1964 it was re-designated as the KDF-8 and sales continued to 1965. The machine was essentially the same as the RCA 501 and manufactured under license so that English Electric could offer a full range of computer systems for all its customers, without the expense of developing an entirely new machine. The machine sold for £400,000. Only 13 were sold. The second large computer to emerge from development work at Kidsgrove was the KDF-9, primarily designed for scientific work. One KDF-8 was installed at the Kidsgrove Staffordshire site of the English Electric Company's Computer Bureau. Over the years, and a succession of mergers, this organization became English Electric Leo Marconi, EELM, International Computing Services Limited ICSL, and finally under a joint arrangement between ICL and Barclays Bank, Barrick. The description following describes this machine and its use. Topic. Basic features Topic. Processor, main store KDF-8 was a transistor-based machine with magnetic core memory. The core memory of the machine installed at the Kids Grove Computer Bureau was upgraded from 64K to the then maximum of 96K of core memory. KDF-8 used an octal base 8 addressing system. A machine code instruction was fixed length 10 octal characters long. The instruction set was specifically designed for commercial use. It had machine code level instructions for all four of the decimal arithmetic functions operating on variable length numbers, and also had instructions for efficient manipulation of variable length data strings. Not all instructions required all 10 characters. Given the minimal core memory available, programmers frequently used spare characters in instructions for storage of constants and similar storage saving tricks. KDF-8 was strictly a batch processing computer, running one program at a time. Only one compute instruction could be processed at one time, but it was also possible to have one read and or one write instruction typically from and to magnetic tape executing in parallel. A system of hardware, gates, set and checked at machine code level were used to control the degree of synchronous operation. However, since there was no operating system of any kind, this had to be controlled entirely at the individual program level. The KDP-10 in the Service Bureau was updated in SITU, as the system was built with RCA germanium transistors. Part of the update was to convert the main logic to silicon transistors. There was also a three-character address adder added, and the machine cycle was 15 microseconds, with six timing pulses, where sixth pulse was for settling time, thus the machine cycle was reduced to 12.5 microseconds. The level of programmer skill to control full read, write, compute overlap, especially if data records were batched, several to the real 
block of data on magnetic tape was considerable, since all simultaneity checks had to be hand-coded into the program. Automatic error detection was essentially limited to hardware parity checks at the character level, and there were no processor hardware checks on what the programmer could do. For example, the computer would simply stop if instructed to access a memory location beyond physical memory. Topic. Peripherals There were no magnetic disks, drums or other similar temporary backing storage devices. Bulk storage was limited to magnetic tapes, on open reels, each reel of which was about 1 inch thick and 9 inches 229 millimeters across, holding a maximum of 2,400 feet 730 meters of tape. Data and programs were kept on these tapes. Peripheral error checking was again limited to parity checks on all reads and writes and the use of write permit rings. The Kidsgrove KDF-8 had eight magnetic tape units online, each rated at 40k characters per second read-write speed. Each tape unit was about 6 feet meters tall and 2 feet meters wide, and the processor and memory cabinets were about the same in size and number. The Kidsgrove configuration required a large air-conditioned room. Eight was considered the working maximum number of tape units, one per channel, for any actual KDF-8 configuration. It was possible for each tape channel to be split through additional hardware units into a subgroup of eight tape decks, giving a theoretical maximum of 61 online tape units. TT leased three uniquely coded I.O. channel identifiers were required for other devices. Other tape unit printer pairs were available, able to operate independently of the mainframe. These provided an offline printing facility for volume output, freeing the KDF-8 to run other work. Other peripherals included a paper tape reader 1000 CPS for data and initial program input. An operator's teleprinter device with a slow paper tape punch built in permitting programs to display information to the operator, and the operator to use the keyboard to punch up short program or data items on paper tape. This teleprinter could not be used to input data directly to the computer. All operator commands had to be input through the operator's console. An online printer, used mainly for core dumps of failed programs, both on and offline printers were impact printers, capable of printing a line of either 120 or 160 characters, depending on the model they were single typeface, no lower case. Fanfold paper for the printers was continuous, with perforations between the pages, and sprocket holes at each side of the paper for the paper feed mechanism. Custom paper sizes, with pre-printed lines, text, colors etc. were common, especially for applications like payroll, and small paper tape control loops were needed to match page throw size to each paper type. Topic. Instruction set Each KDF-8 machine code instruction took the format U triple A R R B B B. In this representation, U represents a two octal character operation code identifying the instruction to be performed in the range 00 to 77. Triple A represents a six octal character A core address ranging from 000000 to 777777 a theoretical 1 quarter meg directly addressable main store an actual 96k rr represents a two character register setting one character for each of two possible registers numbered 1 to 7 used to modify the a and b addresses with 0 indicating no register modification and BBB represents the B address, the same as the A address in format. Instructions were read in turn from main store into registers, then executed. Example. An instruction to read data from the online paper tape reader to locations starting at store location octal 200,000 would look like 142000000 spaces for clarity only 
where 14 was the operation code for this type of read, 200,000 was the lowest store location the data would be read to. 00 indicates that no register modification was to be done to the A or B addresses of the instruction, and 77 was the fixed device identifier of the paper tape reader. Note 77 used as a device ID for a write operation would direct the write to the operator's teleprinter. Embarrassing if this was due to a program error, and it was a large data block intended for mag tape. The last four octal characters were not required in this instruction, and would be ignored when the instruction was processed. Such spare characters were frequently, given the extremely limited main store available used by programmers to store constants. Some aspects of the instruction set were advanced, and greatly eased programming of commercial systems. The operation codes 51 to 54 did decimal arithmetic add, subtract, multiply and divide on variable length numbers, stored as decimal characters. One end of each operand was stored at the A and B addresses of the instruction. The other end was identified by an ISS item separator symbol, octal 74. Thus numbers could be any length. A sector compare instruction octal 43 permitted three-way conditional branching of program control depending on whether the data stored in the range from the A address to the B address was greater, less than, or equal to, the value of the same number of characters stored at locations to the left of the previously set T register, as the following assembler language version attempts to demonstrate. Tag op A address RRB address compare set pound T salary, RSC TAXLIMIT TAXLIMIT RCTC BELOW TAXLIMIT ABOVE TAXLIMIT equal TCEQUAL TAXLIMIT This example compares a salary with a tax limit, and jumps to one of three program locations depending on the respective values. The R assembler convention represents the rightmost character of the named field. CTC stood for conditional transfer of control and TC for unconditional transfer of control in the above compare code. The original KDP 10 instruction set compared from right to left, requiring the whole length of the data strings to be compared, a character at a time. KDP-8 was enhanced to compare from left to right, so the comparison could stop as soon as the relative values were clear, speeding up processing of such instructions considerably. Variable length data was handled with the aid of specially designated characters. The ISS or item separator symbol, octal 74, usually represented as, was used to separate variable length data fields. Octal 75 and 76 greater than identify the start and end of a data message. Octal 777777 was by custom and practice used to identify end of file. So data such as names and addresses could be punched onto paper tape for data input as, for example, various instructions could operate directly on this variable length data, and records could be batched say 10 to the batch onto magnetic tape, for efficient storage. Given the relatively slow by today's standards processor and I.O. rates, a significant aspect of the programmer's task was to balance the batching of data on tape, with the computing needed per record and organize the simultaneous I.O. and compute operations with the aim of maximizing overlap of computing with I.O. and avoiding the tape deck stopping between batch reads. Topic. Software. There was no operating system. Programs were initiated by an online operator, via an operator's console. Operators were also responsible for manually clearing memory and resetting the computer between programs, mounting and changing tapes, controlling offline printing and the like. Some standard software packages were available, or became available, all written in the USA by the RCA organization. These included the following. A parameter-driven sort-merge program, capable of handling very large volumes of data. Sort parameters could either be read in from the paper tape reader, for one-off sorts, or compiled in, really just stored in the program. There were extensive user 
hooks where user supplied code could be put in at various stages of the sort, merge process, and assembler language compiler called EZ code. This was not used commercially for some time, since compilation time was then seen as a heavy overhead, but became increasingly used in later years. To save on computer time, typically a programmer would do an initial compile, dry check the program manually, recompile, and then test and debug the compiled machine code version of the program, building up a reel of paper tape machine code patches to the program as each correction was made. Once a fairly robust copy was available, the changes would be replicated in assembler and the program recompiled and retested. Frequently, the last stage was never quite completed, and it was not unknown for production programs to require machine code patches to be loaded from paper tape for each run. Also, a number of major commercial packages for payroll, accounts and share registration were written by bureau staff before the assembler compiler was accepted, and remained entirely in machine code. A further quirk was that the I.O. generation routines of the assembler were not used by one programming section, who had written their own generalized I.O. package, called tape control, based on the COBOL file description table formats. This automated much of the error-prone programming of batching, unbatching of records and controls of simultaneous read, write operations and end-of-file conditions, a COBOL compiler. This was very rarely used, early experiences not having been entirely favorable. One notable exception was a wiring design program called WRS-1, used to help design the hardware for the later English Electric KDF-9 and System 4 range of mainframe computers. Another oddity was a decision table preprocessor for COBOL programs, itself written in COBOL. This was of some interest, since bureau programming staff were at the time experimenting with using decision tables as an alternative to flowcharts. However, while these programmers continued to hand code in assembler from the handwritten decision tables with some success, the compilation overheads prevented the use of the preprocessor to optimize throughput of production programs. Standard packages of software were produced by bureau programmers for payroll, sales and purchase ledgers, share registration, stock control and the like, and some applications such as payroll supported the processing of data from many bureau customers in one computer run with individual individual parameter settings managing individual customers' requirements. More complex client requirements were met by custom-built programs. Topic. Computer operation A very small about 20 instructions bootstrap loader could be held at the front of each program tape, but even this approach was not always used. Tape labels were, with the exception of COBOL and tape control managed applications, almost non-existent. A grandfather, father, son cycle of tape rotation protected production tapes from major disasters, but required careful manual controls. Programmers or for operational suites production control staff gave the operator written instructions on which program tape and data tapes to load, on which devices, and a written summary of how to load and initiate each program. The operator would then load the tapes, and load and initiate each program in turn manually from the console. The console consisting of a vertical display panel about 10 inches 250 millimeters high by about 5 feet 1.5 meters long with a similarly sized slightly angled control panel below it. Each of these two parts was filled with labeled buttons and illuminated indicators each roughly 1 inch square. The display section was made up of indicators which when illuminated showed, in binary grouped as octal characters, the machine's current running or static status at the individual machine core address and register level, for the compute, read and write operations then in progress. When a program was running, this display was a kaleidoscope of quickly changing, flashing, multi-colored lights. The control panel section consisted of press buttons to select the next register to be set and a central part that mirrored the layout of a single machine core address. Other buttons accessed more complex operations. Use of these buttons enabled the operator to select and then directly input to the machine's core storage locations and registers the octal pattern he, she keyed in manually. 
For an operator to input a single machine instruction, each of up to 10 octal characters of the instruction had to be selected and keyed in as its binary pattern, each with the correct odd parity bit. Topic. See also Early British computers <laughs>